I want to take a moment and tell you about what I used to do. Ever since the late 1980s, I used to take every opportunity that presented itself to me to teach in different areas around the world where they invited me to come teach or do some biblical or theological training. I really felt that since I had the chance to go to university, then seminary, then do a research degree, and then a PhD in the philosophy of interpretation, that I was really privileged. And I am. I can't begin to describe how fortunate I am to have had those opportunities. I decided that I wanted to be a ferry, to take the theological education that I had wherever I could. Fast forward all those years till now, and I have to tell you that I've been blessed enough to have done a lot of that. I have been to some amazing places around this globe, and I've met some even more amazing people. Then COVID hit and everything shut down for everyone. But for me, I developed arrhythmia issues at the same time with my heart. And for the past two years, one of my main objectives has been to stay out of the hospital. And I've achieved that with only a limited degree of success. But for the past four or five months, I have not been in an emergency room, which is so great. So when Fuller Seminary asked if I would like to teach a class in person in Houston, I accepted the invitation with a great deal of trepidation though. Is it safe to travel yet? Is it safe for me to travel? Will my heart stay in rhythm while I'm there? What are the nearest hospitals to where I'm going to be located? In the process, I realized that sometimes you have to do something that challenges you. Break out of the box and just do it. After teaching online for several years, the chance to actually look students in the eyes was just too good to pass up. And here's a secret for you. Every professor who teaches online knows that online students aren't real. They're just computer generated characters and pretty good ones at that. So engaging real people once again was huge. I had to fly in the day before classes started and as a reward, I was able to visit the Houston Museum of Fine Arts. In the past, whenever I traveled somewhere, I always made a point to visit the best museums they had to offer and Houston did not disappoint. It has a world-class art museum. Since I only had a few hours there, I went straight to the wing from medieval to 19th century Western art. Why? Because I wanted to see what works they had on display that interpreted biblical texts. Just like a sermon or a commentary, an artwork is an interpretation. Again, Houston did not disappoint. First, I had the entire museum almost to myself. I don't know why, but I timed it perfect. And they had a number of pictures that depicted Mary Magdalene. What's interesting about these though, is that through the history of the church, she goes from being one of Jesus' core disciples and primary witness of the resurrection to becoming a repentant prostitute. The stories of Mary Magdalene get conflated with those of the sinful woman that gives Jesus the foot massage at Simon the Pharisee's house, and they had a great depiction of that, and the woman caught in adultery. This makes for great dramatic art, but bad exegesis. That's not who Mary was. A real discovery was this 16th century Flemish work, Salvador Mundi, or Savior of the World. It depicts Christ in a typical pose looking at the viewer with his right hand raised, giving the blessing. In his left hand though, he holds the universe. The earth is at the center of this glass orb and the sun and the other planets orbit around it. It depicts the old Ptolemaic concept of the universe or the cosmos where everything revolved around the earth. For three days, I taught at Fuller's regional campus there for about six to eight hours. Now, Fuller used to have regional campuses all around the western half of the United States. Then the financial meltdown of 2007 2008 hit, and most of these campuses were closed, like ours in Colorado. But Houston survived. Why? Because it was built on a solid foundation, to use a biblical metaphor. A group of very wealthy patrons banded together and formed the Texas Theological Foundation and they purchased this building for Fuller, which is right in the middle of one of the prime office areas in Houston. Only about a quarter of the building is being used by the seminary. The rest of the office space is rented out. 
The income from that rent then goes to paying the local staff salary and student scholarships. This is a really creative way to not only plan a campus, but also make sure that it was self-supporting and financially viable into the future. What's really cool for me is that I was invited to teach the very first class that was taught at the Fuller campus in Texas. They didn't have the facility then. In fact, they rented a room from a local high school. Things have come a long way since then. Check this out though. One of the perks they have here is they actually have their own Starbucks machine for the students and faculty. Now I have to tell you, I'm not gonna show you videos of the class for the simple reason is that's not why I went there. And also it's not fair for me to ask those I'm teaching if I can videotape them. They really don't have freedom to say no. So out of respect for them and their privacy, I just don't take videos in my classes. So this is Michael Murray. He used to work on the main library in Pasadena. And I got to know him because he would come out to Colorado when we had a campus and would help us with the library. And now you're the director here in Houston. That's correct. Yeah, so how long have you been? I've been at the Houston campus since 2011. Since 2011, yeah. I see. 11 years now. Yeah, well, congrats. Thank you. The big challenge you're facing right now is rebuilding after COVID. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, we for about a year and a half, all, all of our classes were online. We didn't have any in-person courses, so we had this great space. But nobody was here, you know. Um, and so we also lost a recruiter during the beginning of the pandemic. So we're, we're really in a rebuilding stage right now. So, but things are, are hopeful. We have a new chancellor named Wayne Park. It just shows the challenge that COVID hit every institution with. The students we had in the class here were great. Yeah. So it was a real privilege for me to be down here and get to know the people in Houston. And, fellowship with them. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. It was great to have you, and I know the students really enjoyed the class. So. All right, thanks, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. They were a great group, though, and it reminds me of the quote from the motivational speaker, Charlie Tremendous Jones. You're the same person today as you will be 10 years from now, except for the books you read and the people you meet. And that is a great summary of why I love teaching. The whole trip went great. Well, up until the very end. Well, here I am in the Houston airport, and I've got a confession to make about just absolutely how brilliant I am. When I booked the flights, I did round trip on American Airlines. I had great flights extra leg room in the seats. I had made my flight reservations for the following Saturday, not this one. Now, luckily, American is going to refund me the flight, and then they helped me get a flight on United this evening. But I can't believe it. I thought for an hour there that I was gonna be stuck here in Houston, not knowing how to get back home. I'd be lying if I said that I was totally at ease and relaxed during the whole trip. Instead, I think it gave me a little glimpse into what it must be like to travel for people with disabilities or other health issues. At the same time, this trip helped me to dream about what it's going to be like when COVID is behind us and we're able to travel and get back to life as normal. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to say is I'm going to have part two of the history of the canon coming up next week. I wasn't able to do it because I was in Houston this past week. So please stay tuned for that. Until then, peace.